good plan, especially today. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome to the risk working group meeting on October 14th, 2021. Today, we are going to talk about the various different ways that we are measuring something like Libyar that may not exactly be exactly the same as Libyar. And I'll share my screen here. Okay. So this if is our folks could add their names here. Yes. I, to I, the I, just just for the minutes. record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just for the record, I'll note that we are in, we are competing with KubeCon. Yes. So we know we're missing some people, and yes. we may need to end early because of that. But we yeah. Got... Thank you, David. Okay. All righty. So let's go down to dependency risk assessment. We de we have, I believe, this is released now. And so oh, wait, wait, is, wait, wait. You, did you copy the agenda from the previous one? I did. I did. Okay. Yes. So we don't need OSSNA slide comments anymore, right? No, no. Those can be, that can be removed okay, completely. We don't yes. Need... Okay. Correct. Okay, so there are metrics similar to Libya's yet different. Uh, I'm not sure that we can resolve or you know make any resolution of what is one better than the other, but at least we can try to clarify the differences here. Yeah, so I remember that one of the discussions we had was, let me just bring it, that's Libya dependency. Yeah, there was another name that was, I, I thought that's... was a little misleading, but at least it's not the same as Libya. Okay, so, so, having so there's is good. So average Libyar apparently points to the document that became Libyars. So we probably need to clean that link up because that's not what we were actually did we Libyars. Well, yeah, we, we, yeah Libyars is, is I think the right title because it's yeah. average and I I think also maximums. Okay. Average, median, maximums. All right. So, the, so the, the the document being referred to is Libyar because that tells you how to do you know calculate various things that then are averaged and yeah. Unionized. So or we I did. So <laughs> I remember in the <laughs> last. Yeah. So some of these different derivatives, I think we ended up adding as filters in our last yes. discussion. So is it a one metric or is it, it is a multiple metric? Because in the spreadsheet, I see it as like multiple things. And I think that might be part of what David wants to have cleared up here. Well, I, actually, that wasn't because I think there was something else that sounded like lib years, but then it actually wasn't. That was in discussion. And there was there was a um, not lib years, but it was. Right. Um, I know what you're talking. I know exactly what you're talking about. It was. Hang on. I know it, it was um, technical debt. There was a there was a there's a term called cumulative technical debt that has been used um, inside of some OSPOs, and that let me see if I can find the essentially what that All metric. Right, I, go ahead, David. I was going to say I'm I'm going to quickly comment. Uh, this is a horrifically terrible name because it has nothing to do with technical debt. But... Yeah. And so we could come up with it. We could represent that metric as a chaos metric and give it another name um, if, if we wanted to. I recall the discussion. It was more on the you are carrying so many old libraries as a debt for your project or for your program that you are depending on. Yeah, but it, it, I would argue that the majority of technical debt is not being covered by this metric at all. And uh, Right. You know, and there's also this strange notion that you, you know, having zero debt is your goal, uh, which is actually not usually the case. Because um, if you have, if you spend all your time paying down your debt, you know, it's just like buy. I'm going to buy. Wait and buy a house with cash. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if you wait long enough, you will be able to buy the house with cash. You will also be dead, or you probably won't need the house anymore. There was a reason you acquire, the, the reason you take on debt is to accomplish something else within reasonable time. The, the risk isn't debt. The risk is uh, overwhelming debt. 
So I'm putting in the notes here, technical debt. And oh, it's that... right below it. It's I, I already. Oh, is it? Oh, you yeah, did. right below the, the next line down. Oh, OK. Yeah. And so the, the distinction that was identified is it's the cumulative age of all dependencies calculated from the date of the most, the, from the date of the release in the date of the release in use and today's date. So it takes no consideration of how far behind um, a, a library might be. So if I have a 10 year old library and I'm actually using the current release, Libiers would not calculate that as being anything other than like zero, I believe. But right. the, this technical debt metric, which has been used as a heuristic in some OSPOs would say, okay, well, it's 10 years old. Wait, from you... the date of release in use, what, what, what does that in use mean here? Um, so the, the date, so what I meant by it, and maybe it needs to be changed. It's if I'm using whatever the date. So if I'm using 2.01, and there's a, the most recent release is 2.01, then I'm on the most recent release, even if it's 10 years old. Libyers would count that as a zero, but That's technic right. technical debt would count version. Right. Technical debt would count that as being 10 years old. Boy, they're not going to like um, left pad. Yeah. Right. So there may be, there, you know, there may be an argument where we, you know, what would be a better name? For technical debt than technical debt given that they're looking they're looking to to provide some kind of absolute age of dependencies using the current date instead of the date of the most recent release and i'm not sure what different information that provides or maybe that's something we don't need to address and shouldn't talk about <laughs> All right. Um, I'm actually not a fan of this particular measure, um, but you know what? I mean, it, 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 you, I don't. Anytime you measure, um, anytime you measure something, you'll probably get some insights. Right. So, I mean, the pro here, pro is that um, enables noting uh, old software. Oops. That might no longer be maintained. Are you using a machine with a touchpad, David? How did you know? Yes, <laughs> the, indeed. The random jump up a line caused by a wrist resting in the wrong place, which I've done so many times myself. Yeah, I actually, now I thought I had it configured. So as soon as I plugged in a mouse, um, it would disable that, but apparently that didn't work. Let me see. Probably got an operating system update that fixed that glitch. Yeah, it did. <laughs> It did, and it's evil. Uh, the, the, the first things we, we need to do with touchpads is eliminate them with prejudice. Yeah. Uh, not that I have opinions. Uh, no, no, <laughs> I, it surprises me to hear that you do. All right, so let's see here. Enable noting old software that might no longer be maintained, e.g., um, all right, cons. Uh, basically, it penalizes you for penalizes use of um, sta stable. Uh, of, of stable software, e.g., left pad, where no update is expected, yeah, or desired. <laughs> okay, and, and uh, you know the nut. It, my guess is that this heuristic evolved because it was easier to calculate things based on today's date and a release date than trying to determine if you were on the most current release, right? There's more, there's more computational work involved, which, which makes it but, harder, I think, maybe for some folks. Yeah, but uh, though, um, I mean, Augur solved it, but the other, you know, there are other tools. Um, can implement, you know, now implement alternatives like yours.
All right. I, 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 uh, see, I, I think the biggest problem is this last one. Just age doesn't make it bad. The right. issue is older than the current release. Right. And the other one is frankly not so great too. Um, you know, t if tomorrow nothing happens to, in my dependencies, the number keeps changing. Yeah, that's true. Time, you know, the passage of time can change the number and indicate that something is changing when in fact it's not. Is that a separate con? Or is that this? Uh, uh, it's a separate con. Okay, I'll let you insert it somehow that way. Well, I mean, if you if you want, you know, we can always have the horror story, which is the uh, indented list. <laughs> Indented lists and indented lists. Um, I used to, I, I've, I've done a lot of list programming, so I don't have any trouble with uh, indentation. It's turtles all the way down. It's turtles all the way down. Yeah. I don't even know if that story is true, but it, it, I if, don't, it, it wasn't, I think it it's, should, if it wasn't, it should be. It's a fable. I don't think it's a. <laughs> it, it, it's a fable, but it's a good really? fable because. I don't think it's explains. fact checkable. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps the correct question isn't whether or not it's true. It's true as an event happened. It is true in a larger sense. Yeah. <laughs> it illustrates a larger truth. Yeah. All right. So, um, Watching anonymous bat type. Yeah, I well, uh, simply indicate stability, not a problem. All right. Um, I mean, are we? I mean, I think this this is fairly clear, and I I think really what we would suggest is I mean I I agree that using the current date and counting backwards does make it, it makes it harder to apply the metric in a consistent way over time, it might be useful to compare a collection, a large collection of projects at one point in time, but it doesn't really give you any kind of a clear sense of whether or not your dependencies are aging or you're falling behind. Like if, if I'm using a five-year-old library with lib years and it's current, I'm good. And I will notice a big change the next time I calculate lib years if there's a new release that I don't implement. So the the temporal change of my Libier metric is more reflective of it'll it'll signal for me that something has been released or suddenly changed or the landscape has shifted fairly quickly. Or is that the only thing I will ever see with this other metric is sort of the slow degradation of my dependencies based on a point in time. Yeah, there's actually two impacts. The number constantly slowly changes, even when there are no re new releases. Yeah. Um, even when even when there there is a new release, this metric doesn't uh, only changes slowly. Slowly, so it doesn't uh, adequately, uh, so it doesn't note that an important change has occurred right Name it, do, it doesn't version. throw up a flare that the important change has occurred there's no you know i'm just going to say that i don't know how to better say that no flare <laughs> yeah thrown up yeah yeah i mean yeah. it's uh yeah i don't I mean know... i don't mean fl f l a i r i mean you mean right. f l a r no. i mean yeah like yeah like uh on the side of the road uh, right a little pyro pyrotechnics 
in the pyrotechnic sense, not the button on my uniform sense. Right. Right. So, it's, I mean, the, the great thing about this is that's easy to implement, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, I think you know, maybe actually we should lease. The, um, you know, it's, it's easier to implement than lib years. I think yes. that's the. Yeah, because I don't have to check package managers or repositories to see the release date. Well, you do have to find out when the release date was. Yeah. Uh, uh, since you only need to know its date, you don't have to find out when it's alternative release. Yeah. Uh, please excuse me. I have a phone call. I have to. Yeah, no problem. So, Vinod, uh, essentially, we're talking about this cumulative age of all dependencies, which was called. So I'm I'm having a hard time to understand like how it is easier and difficult. Like, so what's so what's this... easier? What's easier is with Libier, I have to go look at either a package manager or a GitHub repository or some piece of information to know the date of the most recent release. Right. And then I have to be able, then I have to go get the metadata for the date of the release that I'm in, that I'm using, if that's different. So it requires access to a package manager or a repository so that I can calculate a delta between two dates that are not today. For the cumulative age of all dependencies, we still need to look at the, when they were first released. So it's like uh, two separate calls or API calls to look at the date. It's not date that they were first released. It's, it's the date of, so it's today, this day, yeah. October 14th. Okay. And then the date of the light, the age of the date of the library, the release right. of the library that I'm in using currently. Yep. So and that is the date we got it. And here again, we are looking for the date for that library right. for a latest release, even. Yeah. So right. I, I so, feel like it, it's an API call for a library to find out the date. And in terms of difficulty, I'm not sure it's. Yeah. It, well, it's easier because you're not having to calculate and store uh, a, a version history okay. for for a particular dependency. And you do have to have access to that so that you can do a delta between your current the release that you're using okay. and the more current the most current release yep. date okay. for a stable release, remembering our definitions in Libier, which is another challenge, of course. By the way, uh, I, I would call this the cumulative age of dependencies. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that would be a that, that's a better name than technical debt in terms of being clear about what it is. Right. I would propose something. I, okay. Given the pros and the cons. Okay. Um, I think I, I frankly, I, I realize that some people use it. And I respect that, hey, having some information can be better than none. Yeah. I, I don't really, I don't think that this is a a metric that we should, rec I mean, recommend. I mean, people want to use it. That's fine. So people can use it. We don't have to define a chaos metric for it. No. We, we might want to document in our lib years discussion that there are alternative measures. Here's one. Um, okay. It does provide. It can provide some useful information, uh, but we have chosen not to doc to uh, define it. Here's why: pros, cons. Right. So basically, grabbing this and yanking that into the Libier's text. W would people be willing to do that? Is that plausible? I mean, um, yeah. You know, I just yeah. Why don't you go ahead and do that? And what I need to do is um... uh, you have a table open for Libier's which is like after the sheet. All right, now where is yeah. the, li okay, so here's the Libya. Oh, here doc. I can, yeah, did you find it? All right, yep, I yeah. did. Okay. It, so right. what I'm gonna do right now is, it's another Google Doc. Um, it, okay, now we don't have anything, uh, oh, no, there's a visualization, references, contributors. I mean, do we have a, a, a discussion or alternatives or something like that? Is there anything like that? No, we don't have that in the template. Maybe in the well, we can, you know what? or somewhere we can define that. You, you know what? I, I see no trouble in adding a new heading 
<laughs> uh, it may not be in your template, but if I add, if I do sharp sharp and say um, discussion of alternatives, uh, no uh, one can stop me. <laughs> so the problem uh, with that is would, it'll break the release cycle if we release the metric. Does it really break things? What yes. Do you know what it so there was well for data collection strategy if we if we did it so we have data collection strategies what if what if that was um just a four pounder under data collection strategies that shouldn't break anything no that should not but like does it really fit into data collection strategy yeah i think it does, does actually <laughs> Honestly, yeah, we, we can have a subheading in alternatives as a data collection strategy, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think that that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the data collection strategies, I think, as noted, as noted above, there are many tools, tools available that compute libiers. Okay, alternatives. Okay. Um, All right, so let's let's do this here. here. Uh, there are alternative metrics that can be used to help um, measure the age of dependencies, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. One alternative. I'm just going to use our new name here. It is cumulative yeah. age of dependencies. And I'll just delete this line. Oh, no, not quite yet. Because which is also sometimes called what technical debt. Yeah. OK. Uh, or a cumulative technical debt, or just technical it's debt? It's called the, the person that I talked to is a client technical debt, straight up. Okay. Cumu uh, let's see here. Cumulative age. Oh, let's see. Well, is it cumulative age or it's just age of dependencies? It's it's cumulative, so it's across your entire project. Yeah, but 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 you can also do it per, and then. Uh, you could, oh, yeah. I see, I see. Me, you right, apply so, the filters. All right, yeah, and so on. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the filters kind of make everything a little bit squishier. The cumulative age of all of all dependencies is calculated by the difference between the age and the uh, yeah. totaled up. Yeah. Total across. Total across. Uh, all, dependencies. all dependencies, direct and indirect, right? Yes, I think that's correct. Okay. Oh no, no, not now. If we uh, do it this way, but now we okay. don't need the uh, the indentations. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I thought we were going to use Markdown. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this does get deployed in Markdown, but we've been right. we've been implementing Markdown syntax in Google Docs. Because ah, the collaborative yeah. editing features of Google Docs are really useful Best. for this, for the way that we work in these meetings. You know, it lets multiple people edit. Yeah. Oh. Formatting will be taking care of this uh, capture. Yeah, document. whenever I whenever I move this over to Markdown, yeah. it gets fixed. Okay, so how's this? We have, we we had a discussion. We discussed it. Mm -hmm. One have, question on this alternative. It. I'm sorry. Uh, I have a I have a one question on this alternative. 
So we are saying there are alternative metrics. We have not defined this as a chaos as a this uh, cumulative age of dependency as a metric. So no. should we call? So should we use something as a? Because otherwise this will confuse the reader that oh they they have something cumulative age dependency metric. Let's find out where it is and they might get trapped in that. No, I I think okay. I I think all we need to do is a. Uh, uh, we we encourage organizations to use whatever metrics they find helpful. Mm -hmm. Find helpful for making decisions. However, um, after reviewing its co um, you know, its cons, we have decided to not define was it cumulative water. Cumulative, uh, e age, cumulative of age of dependencies as a chaos metric. Metric, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. This define. will cover this. Uh, then they yeah. don't have to look for another metric. That's right. You know, why didn't you know? I see you have lib years. Why don't you have my other cool one? Well, I mean, yeah, if you find it useful. Great. But we did look, we did think about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually, some of this annotation work that you've done here is going to, I think these kinds of annotations are very helpful so that the same discussions don't occur in a different composition of this working group two years from right. now. I'm yeah. a big believer in recording rationales yes. uh, somewhere. Um, I actually have a quick story. Uh, the Department of Defense has a general policy of when they say you do something, they always give the rationale. Mm -hmm. uh, NASA sometimes would copy DOD stuff, but they would cut out the rationale because, <laughs> you know, that, that, I mean, that's too much text. We don't need all that. And yeah. what was remarkable is that every time somebody said, hey, I don't want to do X, that doesn't make any sense. You know, they would ask for a waiver and nobody knew why the rule existed. And so the nobody could answer the question. They could yeah. never answer. The, they couldn't answer the question. Well, why are we asking for that? And under what conditions would that be inappropriate? Oh, that's hilarious. And, and so, sad. and it's sad, right? So, including I, I, there was actually a particular case of open source because uh, there was a rule that says you couldn't use software. Uh, you couldn't use public domain software, but nobody, but well, okay, it, was, it was actually a free, a free, re, reader word than that. Um, you couldn't use software, and it sounded like you couldn't use software that was free. Okay. And the rationale the DoD gave was because we can't find out who developed who developed it, and we, we can't ask anybody else to fix it, and we can't fix it ourselves because we don't have the source code. Oh, wow. Well, obviously, this doesn't apply to open source, but all the NASA folks had was you know, you cannot use and I forgot it was some phrase like free, you know, a, a, a publicly free or I forgot what the yeah. word was, it was a while back. I mean, but, you know, yeah. They thought open it applied to open source. And you, as soon as you looked at the rationale, you realized, oh, wait, that's by definition not open source. You know, they're worried about main, maintainability. Perfectly reasonable. reasonable. Yeah, perfectly reasonable. Oh, this doesn't apply because blah. So Doesn't make sense I, I think it's important to have rationales somewhere. I, I agree. I agree. And yeah. I, I think I think it's the longer I do chaos, the more these rationales become critical for remembering the conversations we had four years ago. So that yeah. I don't have to be the oral historian of the evolution working group. <laughs> right. But by, by the way, I'm gonna add at the not add it at this time. That way, if so we decide later on, oh, then there's a good re better reasons. Well then great, let's add it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Okay, so you can now check off the box, Sean, that something that we did something today. I would yeah. propose that we close up and we yep. let. I, uh, and so if Sophia hates what we've done. Well, she can. She <laughs> can. About she it. can fix us tomorrow, or in two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, thank you all for participating in the Chaos Risk Working yeah. Group today. I bid you farewell, and we'll see. I'll probably see you, David, at the community summit. I, I think that's likely. Yeah.